Let's bring in Katarina Listic here. She's a researcher with the Global and European Studies Institute at Leipzig University. Thanks for being with us this morning. Dr. Ristich, what are you expecting from the court today? Do you think Mr. Mladic has a chance of winning his appeal? Thank you. Um, one cannot really predict the legal verdict, but I do not expect that tribu tribunal would significantly alter the trial chamber decision from 2017. As a matter of fact, it is widely expected that the appeal chamber will confirm that Mladic was guilty on the charges of genocide in Srebrenica, of terrorizing uh, civilians in uh, Sarajevo during the three years long siege and uphold the life sentence. Hmm. As we saw in our report there, Mr. Mladic is revered by some of his compatriots. They see him as a hero. What do you make of that? Uh, well, um, it is uh, true that uh, Srebrenica and uh, Vladis' role in Srebrenica uh, has remained contested memory in Serbia and in the region, despite all the number of verdicts uh, detailing the atrocity and the responsibility of Vladic and Karadzic, for, uh, for that matter. Uh, but the public in Serbia has never fair, given the fair presentation of what was happening there. And in July 1995, I lived in Belgrade, and then public was occupied celebrating the first major sport victory. It was a European Basketball Championship, and then Yugoslavia uh, won in Greece. And media reports did not detail on Bosnia, on war, on atrocities. Instead, it was just another uh, victory, ending the war, and that is how it remains till today. Well, as you say, you've lived in Serbia when uh, Mr. Mladic committed the atrocities there in Srebrenica. In an earlier interview, you told us that most people there, including yourself, didn't, didn't realize what was happening. You just explained what was on television. Are people there today aware of what happened? Do they recognize the Srebrenica massacre as a war crime? Uh, generally, I think there is awareness that uh, atrocity was committed, but the genocide charge is highly contested as a political charge. And uh, mainly population would say that it doesn't amount to genocide. Instead, when talking about genocide in Serbia, you would probably hear about Jasenovac and the Second World War atrocities against Serbs rather than applying genocide to atrocities uh, through the war in 90s. Uh, and just finally, the, the conflicts surrounding the breakup of the former Yugoslavia, they involved ethno-nationalist movements that linger on in the Balkans today. How dangerous would you say those movements are? Nationalism and these movements have been dangerous and they flourished during the war. They've been steady part of regional politics in the last three de decades. Uh, nevertheless, there is a disturbing trend of rise of radical right. Uh, mainly connecting through social media, where anonymous users are celebrating genocide in Bosnia and turning Mladic and Karadzic into heroes, inviting for acceleration of violence. Terrorist Andreas Breivik in Norway and Branton Tarrant mm. in New Zealand were inspired by radical right and Rad uh, Radovan Karadzic and Ratko Mladic. And this rise of radical right is by no means endemic to Balkan, it is really connecting Islamophobic extremists um, beyond uh, Europe. Dr. Rich, uh, Ritzich, thank you very much for talking with us. That was Dr. Katarina Ritzich of Leipzig University.